Okay, so I did one version of this video, but I think I'm going to stick with this second version, mainly because I can probably get it all done in one take. So I posted a video about Enochian and how to get started with it, and somebody asked me about Aethers. So I'm going to present a couple of different models, and then I'll get into what it was used for. So one of the models is that it's something like this, where, and this is the way John D conceptualized it in his diaries. And the idea is that basically you have 30 concentric spheres about the earth. Terra is Latin for earth. That's your Latin lesson for the day. Um, spheres about the, the world, right? So what would that be, you know, like? Well, it'd be kind of like the idea of seven heaven, right? heavens, right? So you have earth and then you might have a lower heaven, but that you need, then you would have a higher heaven and so on and so forth. Um, but the angels specifically call them aethers or airs. So there is something, some idea basically, you know, birds fly through the air. So there is sort of an idea that, you know, you're getting something above the planet Earth. Instead, you're you're above, you're looking down, stuff like that. So, and that's why the first Aether, Lil, is actually the highest one. Because if you're an angel looking down from heaven, then the highest one up is, is that's, that's from, the, from, the, from union with God, I'll put it that way. And you're looking down from union with God, and then you're slowly, slowly getting closer to Earth. Then the first one you go across is Lil, because that is the Aether that is highest to God. So the initial way that the Aethers were conceived... So let me, let me back up. So what, what would you do? You would make a call in the Enochian language, which is basically... A, it's also known as a key, one of the Enochian keys. Claves is the Latin for it. And the idea is basically you make the call... And then you get this consciousness that of that sphere, basically, right? That heaven. Now, the initial way that the angels, according to Aaron Leach, and I haven't verified this, but he's accurate on most everything, so I'm not going to really doubt him on that. The way the initial the angels initially said to do it was to basically do kind of what you would see in Hecalot literature, also known as Merkava literature where you'd go all the way up to, to the palace of the divine and then slowly come down. Why would you do that? I think the main idea back then, and if you're interested in this, you can look at the Secret History of West, Western Esotericism podcast, also known as Schwepp, conveniently located at Schwepp, S-H-W-E-P.net -E -E with Earl Fontenelle. Um, and listen to his episodes on that, and he'll get into the whole background by that uh, about that. And it's it's interesting, it's fun. It is a little, he does he's definitely much more academic, but he's fun. He's fun as heck. So so give him a shot. Um, so the idea is that you would you know go up, you would see have this amazing vision of God, and then slowly go down, and pick up everything else you need along the way until finally you can come back to Earth. So that's definitely one way to do it. And that's certainly one promoted by uh, Aaron Leach, L-E-I-T-C-H. He's definitely got a lot of expertise on this. But I also, there's another school of thought, which is that, hey, you know, if you want to, like, get up and get into heaven and get the most of it, really, we should start kind of small. <laughs> start start a little, like, one down instead of thinking we're, like, okay to just suddenly go up and meet God. Maybe instead we should sort of build a foundation, right, and slowly accumulate uh, additional wisdom that is a little bit, a little bit farther away from Earth, but start close to Earth because that's what we're familiar with, right? And there's a really good argument, and actually that is what what I do recommend to people who are getting into Enochian: start close to Earth because you're familiar with Earth as a human being. Okay, and you know it's it's not not as much of a leap now. So that is kind of the deal with Aethers. And if, if you take nothing else from this video, say, okay, Cliff recommends scrying the Aether to text, which is to say, have a vision of this lowest, lowest heaven, which is still higher than earth, and have this consciousness change. And that's really, that's the main takeaway I would have for you.
Now, is that the only way to think about the Aethers? The answer is no. <laughs> so, but I wanted to start there, but we'll get into the additional information about the Aethers in a second. But that's kind of the main takeaway. Now, each of the Aethers has governors. Now, I made a mistake early on. You might see it in earlier videos or blog posts. And, you know, what can I say? I learn, I move on. But I also sometimes just want to leave the mistake out there. So I, on the blog, I'll put it in strike through font and then just go, you know, because it's like I'm human. I make mistakes, whatever. And the source documents uh, refer to both parts of Earth and governors. And really, the governors are what they really are is... Um, angelic kings, zodiacal kings, so in it, which is to say kings of the zodiac who are angels, who also have power over within each of these 30 concentric circles, okay? So you would, if you're having trouble, if you do make a call to the aether and nothing really happens or you, you might feel something, usually I try to say repeat the call, but then if you get a little bit more into Enochian, you can actually call upon those angel names and just sort of repeat them over and over again. You know, don't do it more than a dozen times each, but you know, blah, 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 blah. You know, and in my case, it's, you know, if you were doing Lil, the highest one, and I'm only mentioning that because I have done that one a lot, you would say uh, Zarzil, Zingjin, Alpidus, which are the names of the three angelic kings. The zodiacal kings who rule over that that aether, that highest sphere. Okay, so that's kind of the overall take. And anyway, when you do that, when you go through the process of the aethers, you slowly build up, and eventually you get to the highest one, you know, assuming that, you know, you've got full downloads, full experiences from each of those previous ones. And how do you know that? You just sort of do the main process of like self-development, psychological development, go to regular therapy, write in journals, all of that stuff, you know, the, the, the basics, basics. Okay. And if you, by the way, if you have a therapist who's like saying, this is all crazy stuff, what are you doing? You know, you know, you're crazy. Let me get you, get you on medication. It's a complicated question as to what to do next. Right. Because you may be crazy <laughs> and you also are having these experiences. So it's, it takes a lot of work to, divide out, okay, this is my spiritual experiences, this is my mind doing whatever. And really the main thing is take take it slowly to figure out which is which, okay? And also remember my first video, it's like there's a lot of yourself you have to honor. Okay, so, so that's kind of the overall takeaway I have for why I mentioned scrying the Aethers. Now, there's another part of this, which is that the Aethers were not exclusively related to consciousness. In fact, that's not, that is, it's a modern innovation on the Aethers. And this is all kind of goes back through the Golden Dawn tradition, including one of its more infamous members. But um, suffice it to say that it is a good innovation and it works. And it does give you like this, this divine, uh, this and, you know, first of all, heavenly, second of all, angelic and then once you get to the top much more almost a, a union of with divine consciousness okay and there's no other words to describe it other than that except for in the elaboration which all is kind of conceptually the same thing and it's transcendent and it's wonderful and that's why i recommend just getting your feet wet starting to get that little shift of consciousness by doing that lowest aether of text okay so the next thing I wanted to mention is what else the Aethers are for. I don't recommend getting started with this, but I do want to be complete in terms of what the Aether is. So for that, I'm gonna to go to my diagram here. So I mentioned briefly, and this is sort of that same idea here. I mentioned consciousness. The thing to think about it in terms of why it works like that is that there's multiple ways to look at it. So I mentioned the zodiacal kings that are associated with this. So here we have King Zarzilj and, you know, Zingjin and Alpidus. And these three would be all up at the Aether of Tex. Hang on, I gotta make sure I'm pointing correctly here. 
So Zarzild, Zingjin, Alpidus, they're all associated and govern the Aether of Lil. But here is a little bit more of this idea of, okay, well, these are zodiacal kings, right? So you get these zodiacal signs up. If you project out from where you are out into the heavens, right? Then you would have 30 degrees occupied by the sign of Libra. And this is, I think I have this backwards. So that's why I have the arrow here um, between uh, the sign of Libra and the sign of Aquarius and then the sign of uh, Sagittarius. And by the way, these are not the constellations of that. Please don't get those confused. Please don't at me. Please don't tell me I don't understand astrology because I don't understand astronomy because I don't understand the procession of the equinoxes. Please don't do any of that because you're wrong. <laughs> if you think that. Um, so anyway, uh, another way, just a different model here. I'm going to, I kind of went a little bit longer here, but another model, if you were to go beyond that and say, well, why... Why do these spheres work? You know, yes, you could sort of think of them as like coming out from Earth and then encompassing the entire universe. That's one way of thinking about it. But also just because we have zodiacal kings, another way I've thought about this is um, thinking about it in terms of like projections from the Earth. So if you, you know, I've, I've done a bad job here of showing this, but like this is the this is the universe and this is Earth within the universe. So I'm just showing this like projecting out here. But if you think about it, like, if you were to take the 12 signs of the zodiac, then if you were to project out completely, you'd have the entire universe. So if you then say, well, I'm going to incorporate this, I'm going to try to work with this zodiacal king uh, through this, this, you know, system of aethers, and let's say I master everything that that zodiacal king has to say, well, then I would have that entire sign I would project out and I would have that level of consciousness going all the way through the galaxies out to infinity, right? I would all of that have all of that integrated within me, okay? So, well, that's pretty cool. <laughs> so once I have done that, then you can imagine, like, if I get, if I did that over and over again through all the possible iterations of that zodiac, of that zodiacal sign through that zodiacal king, then all of a sudden I would have the entire consciousness of that sign, and if I could do that for all 12, then I would have the entire universe. I would have universal consciousness, which is to say, divine consciousness, right? So this is just another way of showing that. Um, but basically, if you had to explain it, you can either say uh, layers, you know, spherical layers about the cake that is Earth. Uh, you know, you could think of it like that, 30, 30 layer cake around the, 30 spherical layers around the cake, around the Earth. Or you could say uh, 12 uh, orange wedges, each one of which is divided 30 times. And each time you do an aether, you get one, you get 12, the first degree of each of the 12 signs. And then the second time you do an aether, you get the next degree, right? Assuming you do, you can do that. I'm just throwing out some models here of ways to think about this and why you get to the divine consciousness at the end. Okay. So, okay. So that's, the, that's the large part, and I'm just going at this multiple directions now. In terms of how John D actually thought about this and was working with the angels about this and the way the system can be used, one that I shy a little bit away from, but there are actually some upsides even if you don't use it this way, but the way you would use it is political magic. So, yeah, causing political change on Earth through heavenly forces what could go wrong, right? <laughs> so be careful if you even think about doing this, things can go wrong. Uh, but there are people who do this, and one of them is Scott Stenwick, and he and I are very much aligned politically, so I have no problem with him using that. But um, at any rate, uh, really, and this is why I say, really do your internal check, right? Like, you better have a really, a really good reason to get involved and really you know, it does take this place of like, okay, I know better than you. And usually the way you can do that is, you know, from a principle that a lot of other p smart people have done, such as human rights, uh, stuff like that. If human rights are being violated, people are being abused, or there's genocide or ethnic cleansing, whatever the case may be, that would be a good reason to use it. Okay. Now, 
how would it work <laughs> if you were going to do that? Now that now that I've warned you and scared you, let's talk about it. Uh. Okay, so the idea here, right, I'm just showing a couple of examples here. Do, 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 do. Yes, okay, I'm showing up. So here is Earth, a representation of that. And I apologize for things not being to scale, etc. And apologize for emphasizing Britannia so much, but... You know, what can I say? John D. was from there, so blame him. Blame him for being born where he was. Um, okay, so I've shown here a couple of the aethers, only two. The aethers, by the way, are also known as heirs. Again, stuff up in the air. So I've shown a couple of these uh, spheres here. So one sphere, one aether or air, is the aether of asp and what i've shown here is that there's these little tunnels or wormholes or whatever the idea here is that there are these way like if you get farther from earth but if i had like little fingers that could go down and like touch these right now obviously i only have five fingers and in the case of most of the aethers there's only three so i'll just do it like this right so i got three fingers and through these three fingers i can do whatever you know or maybe maybe these three are even better that way i can you know have an influence on different parts of the world but there's only three, and these are locked in. So this is the Aether of Asp, and the Asp Aether has the part of Earth known as Cherzpa, and it's basically this entire area. It's not just like Britannia, it's in terms of like Great Britain, uh, but includes, you know, Scandinavia, let me find it here, Scandinavia, Denmark, and Iceland, etc. So it's pretty much that whole, that whole region, really, is a better way to think of it. Now, I just put that in there because it's easy, it's easy to show, but really I wanted to show, you know, a larger one to just show you how it would work if you were doing this. So, the Aether of Lil, which is the highest Aether, those fingers that come down and touch the Earth proper politically are uh, Pascom, which is the uh, part of it, which the mundane name for this is Syria, Volgars, which is the angelic name for Mesopotamia, and then Okadon, which is the angelic name for Egypt. So I got these three fingers that can come down. The fingers can be so considered like whatever uh, dominion, let's say, that the angelic zodiacal kings have over those three parts of Earth. So, okay, well, which, which angels are we talking about here? Well, <laughs> if you're getting into this, uh, Zingjen is over Me uh, Mesopotamia. Zarzilj is over... Okay, Zarzild is over um, Okadon, which is Egypt, and uh, Alpidus, which I didn't write his name out here, but the king associated with Libra, he is over the part of Syria, okay? So what? how would this work? Well, just really briefly, you'd make the call to Lil, say, O oh, you heavens which dwell in Lil, Madriax diaspraf Lil. You would say, you would make that call and then say, you know, Oh, you heavens arise, you lower heavens, and so on and so forth. And eventually, the idea is that making that call, it's the angels also call them keys. You're literally unlocking that um, that aether and that level of consciousness. So it's basically, I'm taking this outer sphere and I'm going, unlock, please, so I can have all of your powers, including this power to um, ask the zodiacal kings to make such and such a change. And they will have their influence. They will do what they can for you. If you ask them nicely and you're approaching with appropriate intention and all of that, they're helpful and they will cause changes. Now, I have done political magic twice, one of which I was successful, probably in the wrong way, but I, the overall effect that I wanted, it worked. Um, and the other time it was not so much me trying to effect a political change, but rather have that my consciousness would be well aligned with the place that I was living, okay? So that I would be okay, you know, living here, basically the place where I live. <laughs> so, so that's what you would do it for. That is not something I recommend for beginners. It's not something I recommend for intermediate people. For advanced people, if you get into it, really do your homework, really do a lot of thought and reflection and meditate on it, meditate, meditate, meditate. So just really briefly, I mentioned here, uh, I wanted to get into a few other things before I wrap up. 
So where do these aethers come from? Where do, you know, and I'm, I, I'm sure that there is a connection, but I don't know that off the top of my head, but I'm pretty sure that there's a connection to the, between the aether names and these tablets. These are known as watchtower tablets. And I'm not sure if the aether names, but I do know that the, the parts of the earth are actually derived from little patterns here within these watchtower tablets. So the watchtower tablets both have this elemental side where you can get some, some magic that is theoretically grounded in either the four directions, that's one way of interpreting it, or the four elements, Western elements, Aristotle, that sort of thing, from another point of view. And there are various powers that the angels said were associated both with the elements, but also with these four directions that you could request, including medicine is a big one, right? And you think if you think money is first and foremost, wait till you lose your health, right? So, so I do recommend, you know, looking into some of the source documents here. This video has gone way longer than I thought it would. But at any rate, um, the source documents, if you're looking for them, are listed here. And I'll go ahead and put a link in the uh, show notes <laughs> in the uh, in the description as far as how to get those. Um, and really, it is it is a slog, but eventually you will want to do that if you want to understand. And why do I say it's a slog? Because John Dee's handwriting was not very good, and there is a lot of old English spelling. And when I say old, I mean early modern English spelling. And then finally, there is the issue of the fact that a lot of what John Dee wrote was not in old English, it was in Latin. And I get by kind of okay, but not really in Latin. <laughs> there, I know a lot of, if you know a lot of root words of English, you will be about 10% uh, okay in Latin. And I noticed I didn't say 10% proficient. Um, so I know a bunch of those, and there's some Latin phrases that you can use here and there, but it's not, it's not enough. And if I had the time and all the money in the world, right, I would learn Latin. I would become a master of Latin and Greek and all of this. Not so much in, and and Sanskrit and Tibetan and all of these different, and Chinese, you know. And by Chinese, I mean all the different dialects, right, and Japanese, and I would get it all done. And then everything forever and ever, 100 years Rick and Morty. So the, but the point is you will want to at least have access to that. You don't need to know all of the language. You will want to be, to look at it in order to see the diagrams and to be able to take a look at how to, you know, how did this actually look? You know, is, am I just like, if I show you the diagram that of the Sigillum de Ameth or, or whatever the case may be of the Watchtower tablets, is that the actual one? Well, you know, check it out, you know. Believe it or not, there's variation. Some of it is copy edits from John Dee's original source documents to, for example, the true and faithful, true and faithful revelation of what happened between John Dee and some spirits by Merrick Kausaban. I believe that's the full title. And there were copy edits from the original documents. So which one is right, you know? And so what um, that site, for as long as it's there, you know, ideally somebody out there will do us all a big favor and just copy all of the contents of that site, which themselves are taken from a previous website known as The Magical Review. And Aaron Leach was involved with them. So that's when I say Aaron Leach, L-E-I-T-C-H. He's one of those people. I think Scott Stenwick probably was one of those as well. But you're going to want to be able to, to get in there, take a look at what was originally transmitted. Don't take my word for it. I'm just a guy. I'm just a guy who's done his best <laughs> and trying to um, make this clear for people. So, so anyway, that's the Aethers, and I will probably touch on the... So the Zodiacal Kings, you know, so to recap, Aethers, if you do them on their own, it's kind of heavenly celestial consciousness. If you, they, if you are trying to make sure to get get that unlocked and just making the call to the Aethers doesn't work, do the repeat the names of the Zodiacal Kings of that Aether. And if you are doing political magic, you would pick the part of the Earth associated with that Zodiacal King within that Aether, make the call to the Aether, 
call up that zodiac king using whatever conjuration you would want to use and then say please effect such and such a change okay and use your powers for good if you're not sure what good is take some classes in ethics take some classes in, um, you know, take some psychological classes to make sure your ethics are actually uh, grounded in a good, healthy psychology. And pretty much, I would say, see a therapist before you decide that such and such a change needs to happen in the world. Because maybe, to quote uh, Cesar Milan, the problem is you. <laughs> and not the problem being in the world, right? And if you don't know, if you're not sure, be be tentative, right? Don't just go out throwing magic at everything, right? Sometimes the magic, the, you know, when they say the real magic is in you, that's what they're talking about, right? The magic is, oh, you know, I need, I have a healthy person inside here who just needs to drop, to drop a bunch of bad habits, bad ways of thinking, and eventually, you know, get into good habits and better ways of thinking and open up that heart, okay? All right, so I've gone on too long. This really was only intended to be about 10 minutes and I've gone out for 26. What can I say? This is Cliff. I do that. <laughs> All right. Love y'all. Bye.